everybody. Hi there. My name is Sisanda Hema. I am an actor, a producer, a director. I'm also a qualified NLP life coach, which has made me a very good facilitator, speaker, and a budding author. As an actor, I played Julius Nkunzi Shabangu in Mnet HBO on ZDF's Trackers. Lisa Khumoleko in Agent, a drama series about the business side of soccer, streaming now on Netflix globally. The eclectic Pastor Samson on the ETV drama called Hustle. And also the shop steward Samson in a mining drama series on SABC1 called M. Jindini. As a presenter and host, I've hosted numerous shows including Gospel Gold, the biggest gospel music show in Africa. I've also produced and directed on softer winning shows such as Intersections and Gold Diggers. In this video, we, I'm going to be sharing with you part of my journey, uh, some struggles, some wins, and some things I've learned along the way. And in a time of COVID-19 where we're locked down, I think when we look back, we see how we got through some difficult times that those things that we can use now in this time when it seems as if so many doors are closed. My name is Sisanda Hanna, and let's take a journey together. In the year 1999, I'm doing the trick in a small town in the middle of the Eastern Cape in, Kar uh, in the Karoo, the town is called Graf Renet. I'm at a school called Union High School. I have lots of dreams. I actually wanted to be a rugby player if I wasn't a professional actor. Anyway, let's leave that aside. I moved to Joburg. The year 2000, I'm in the first year at, at Technicon Vettelsrand. I want to be an actor. I'm doing information technology and I can't get an agent. I kept knocking on doors. First thing I did is I worked as an extra. I was like, what can I get my hands on? Oh, I can work as an extra? Go work as an extra. As I was there working as an extra, I gave it my absolute best. I was always on time, I presented myself well, and I learned as much as I could. Very important. One day, the, the floor manager said, hey, listen, do you wanna do these lines? So I went from being an extra to a, a, a featured extra, and even a cameo, because suddenly I was given lines to play and perform. And guess what? I was ready. So the next thing is you got to stay ready. You have to teach yourself. You have to upskill yourself. You have to master certain things that when the opportunity comes, you are ready. Akin Omatosha, one of my mentors at the time, um, gave me my one big opportunity because he invited me to audition for Soul City. This was in the year 2002. I went through there, um, I, I met, I remember Umabatukao actually was, I think one of the producers at the time, she auditioned me, I got the role. While I was filming on Soul City as one of the guest starrings in that episode, um, I heard about Chacha, this new drama series. Still, no agent, no degree, no experience. I heard about it. I was so determined that I would be that guy I remember I said, give me the D. She gave me the details of the casting director. When I phoned in Temolin put in Ninja. Yeah, man. And what did I know? Tell her no Andile, your lead actor for Chacha. He laughed. But I knew it. And it became true. Two things were kind of in the way for me. One, they needed a professional dancer who can act or a professional actor who can dance. I was neither of those things. I was just a determined and I suppose talented, but hardworking ambitious young man who would not be stopped from getting his dream. So what I did is I immediately went to acting lessons and I went to dance lessons. And there I was doing my dance lessons, preparing to get this role and got to round three, was cast. I got the role and every day on set, and you'll see like some of the, the people that I worked with, I learned so much from them. I was determined that every day I'd show up and give my very best. That's when my career began and uh, we shot that in the year 2002. And you know what, in the year 2003, I won this award here, this Dugu Dugu Award. This was before we had the South African Film and Television Awards. We had uh, the South African Dugu Dugu Awards, which were run by Selma Tunzi. Anyway, that year, I couldn't believe it. I was blown away. I had been uh, nominated amongst people I had watched while I was in high school, some of my heroes, I Tony Horoche, you name them. Um, and, I, and I walked away with the award that night. How did I get to this from the kid that was in a, in a small town in the middle of the Eastern Cape? Well, I kept dreaming and then I kept learning and I worked hard. 
Okay, so there I was. I did a degree in information technology. I graduated in the year uh, 2003 from Wits Technikon, which is now known as University of Johannesburg. Uh, and I now started a career in film and television. So mostly I've been working as an actor. Uh, I knew that I wanted to work behind the scenes. So I started to, I asked the production company where I was working if I can work as an intern. And I started as a runner. That's right. So I would make people lots of coffee. I would clean up. Uh, when we left a certain location, I drove around and ran errands. And that's how I began. And I started to learn so much more. But I would go home. And on my way home, I'd pick up a book from the library. Or I'd make sure I'd get things printed out from the internet or something. Where I could learn how to be a director. And so even if you don't have access to maybe a film school or a university or money to take you to a college to do that. There's so much on the internet that you can learn from home in whatever career that you want to start. And there's a way to do it. And there I was started teaching myself all of these things. When the opportunity came uh, and there was an intersection season two, I pitched so hard that I should be one of the directors. And I had materials that I could use to prove that I needed to be in there. So. How do you thrive during lockdown? When it seems as if you do not have the privilege, the access or the resources to become the thing that you've been thinking that you want to become. Well, let's look at what you do have access to. Let's look at upskilling yourself, teaching yourself the skills so that you can be of service to that community or to that part of the market in whatever way that you want to offer them that. So how do you make it through the difficult times? Well, as much as I've been sharing some highlights and some really awesome things that have happened, I've had times where I've had no money. There's been no work. Things were quiet, right? So what do you do during those times? One of the first things for me that really helped to turn around difficult situations is making sure you set yourself up for success. How do you do that? Well, Happy people who are in a great space will always attract a lot more success to them. They will have something about them that says, if I go with this person, this thing is gonna work out. And it doesn't matter what job or business that you're in, when people have that feeling about you, they're more likely to do business with you than with anybody else. So staying fit and being, exercising, eating healthy, having enough sleep, becomes of primary importance to become healthy, fit, and at your physical optimal best so that you can give your best. Now, when you're feeling good, automatically your mind is gonna start giving you good ideas about, and suddenly you feel, because you feel good, it, it will elicit thoughts about possibility face, in facing any situation that, that you might come up against. So in a difficult time, or rather, let's say challenging time because perception is everything, right? So what I'm saying about that is, it's important how you frame a situation to yourself. Framing is about giving meaning to a situation. So are you destitute in trouble or are you entering a new phase, a new phase in your life? The way you used to, be, to do business might be very different now because lockdown has almost shifted the way the world used to work. So what do you need in order to thrive now? As I've mentioned just now, staying healthy is one of the best first things you need to do. The second one, I think you need to stay healthy mentally. And that means in the same way that you eat healthy, it means the things you consume, that you watch, that you listen to, that you read, conversations that you're part of, must be healthy too. And just like you exercise your body, exercise the muscle in your mind, exercise thinking and decision and speaking the things that you want to go your way. That's how, my friends, in my view, in the long uh, time that I've been walking this journey, I've learned a few things that can set you up for success in a difficult time such as this. So you wanna stay fit and healthy. That's physically the way you eat and exercise and drink lots of water and sleep and stay healthy mentally and spiritually. So make sure you're balancing your life and surrounding yourself with family and friends that will support you, that will encourage you and speak things uh, to you, your life and your business 
in the way in which that it's going to pour water and nourishment into your being such that it can help for you to manifest the things that you want to manifest.